report. I'm Amy Goodman. The United States has apologized to Guatemala over the disclosure government researchers deliberately infected nearly 700 unknowing Guatemalans with syphilis and gonorrhea in experiments during the 40s. Recently unearthed documents show about 700 Guatemalan soldiers, prisoners, prostitutes, mental patients were infected as part of a study into the effects of penicillin. It's unclear if the patients were ever cured of the diseases or even given treatment. On Friday, State Department spokesperson P.J. Crowley said the Obama administration has apologized. Yesterday afternoon, Secretary Clinton called President Colom of Colombia to express both her shock at the discovery of uh, the details of this research uh, and also to apologize on behalf of the American people. Uh, during the course of the conversation, uh, she also invited uh, Guatemala to participate fully uh, in the investigation that uh, we will carry out to determine the facts behind uh, this research. Hours after the findings were revealed, President Obama personally telephoned Guatemalan President Alvaro Colón to apologize. Colón called the experiments a crime against humanity. It's an incredible violation of human rights, but there it is. We must face it. And we're going to do whatever is necessary so that we can find out quickly the effect on people, because what we're interested in is the victims, obviously indignant. And if there were officials from the past who were involved in this, that also needs to be told. Guatemalan President Colom also says his government is studying whether it can bring the case to an international court. The Guatemalan study is the latest covert U.S. government human experiment to come to light. The head of the study, Dr. John Cutler, was also involved in what many consider the most infamous case, the Tuskegee experiments. For 40 years, U.S. government researchers deliberately withheld medical treatment from over 600 African-American men who had syphilis, despite misleading them to believe they were receiving care. Well, today we're joined for the hour by the medical historian who discovered the Guatemalan study, Susan Reperby. She's a professor of women's and gender studies at Wellesley College in Massachusetts. Her article on the Guatemala study will be published in the January edition of the Journal of Public History. Susan Reverby is also an expert on the Tuskegee experiments and the author of the book Examining Tuskegee, the Infamous Syphilis Study and Its Legacy. Susan Reverby joins us now from Boston. Professor Reverby, it's, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for asking me. Well, um, we have a lot to talk about today, but why don't we start by you telling us how you discovered the story of what happened in Guatemala in the 1940s? I, d I discovered this uh, history in the way that historians do their work. That is, we go to archives and we read, as a friend of mine put it, dead people's mail. And I was in the University of Pittsburgh archives doing research for my Tuskegee book, looking into the papers of Thomas Perrin, who was the Surgeon General in the 30s and 40s, who was primarily concerned with syphilis. And I realized that uh, John Cutler, who had also been very important in the Tuskegee study, had taught at Pittsburgh and had left papers there. So I asked to look at whatever he had left behind in the archive. I opened the boxes expecting to see material about Tuskegee, um, and all that was in the boxes were his unpublished uh, field notes, his lab reports, um, and lists of patients and pictures of what had happened in Guatemala. And, and you can imagine my unbelievable shock on finding this. I just had no idea it was there and needed anybody else, because none of this had ever been published. Now, this is very significant. You've written two books on Tuskegee, and there have been many other books written as well, not to mention research. So to see the word Guatemala um, in these papers, what did you first think? Well, the words that hit me before I saw Guatemala were inoculation, syphilis. And I've spent now almost two decades working on the Tuskegee study. and. 
Uh, one of the things I do is spend a lot of time trying to explain to people that the United States government did not infect anybody uh, in Tuskegee, that the men already had late, latent syphilis. So seeing the word inoculation syphilis was pretty shocking. And then realizing that this research, which wasn't done in Tuskegee, had been done um, in the global south rather than in the American south, was just uh, unbelievable, as I um, increasingly read the, uh, the details of this and was pretty, as you can imagine, horrified by what had happened. Although, one of the things I want to correct in your lead-in, um, this was really a study to look at treatment. So it was very different than Tuskegee. They were creating infection, but they were also interested in whether penicillin could be used as a prophylaxis. So the way to think about this is, if you think about the morning-after pill, if you take the morning-after pill, it's because you've had unprotected sex and you think you might get pregnant. The idea here was that if soldiers or other men in particular had had unprotected sex, they could possibly possibly use penicillin as a kind of lo in a lotion form um, rather than wait till they had the infection so that's what they were trying to study it wasn't in that sense unreasonable what was of course unreasonable was not asking creating infection violating all these kinds of things that we okay. now think were horrific but at the time there were real issues about whether or not this was Ill there was no illegality in, in a general sense uh, I would guess that people in the 1940s would be absolutely appalled if they heard you're talking about treatment for perhaps soldiers here in this country so they go down to Guatemala and they inject people unknowingly um, with syphilis. Uh, explain how right. well, they, well, exactly explain they did this. Okay, let me explain why, first of all, they went to Guatemala. They went to Guatemala because prostitution was legal in Guatemala, and it was legal to bring a prostitute in for sexual services into um, the prisons. So Cutler was uh, partnered with a man named Juan Funes, who was the director of sexually transmitted diseases, or what was then called venereal diseases, in um, the public health department in Guatemala. He had also been trained in the United States by the public health service. So it's Cutler and Funes and a few other doctors who go down, and the initial studies were using the prostitutes and then giving the treatment if people develop the disease when they couldn't create enough infection by allowing the prostitutes in. It's that's when they started to do inoculations. And the way the inoculations worked was they First of all, let me explain. Syphilis is not an easy—there's a reason it's a sexually transmitted uh, disease. You can't just draw blood from someone who has syphilis and give it to somebody else. You actually have to create an inoculum. The uh, disease, the bacteria that causes the disease can um, die when it's in the air, which is why it has to pass through um, liquids and, and body fluids, primarily. And that's why it's sexually transmitted. So they created an inoculum using um, the ground-up testes of uh, rabbits that already had the disease. Um, and then they abraded or scraped the arms of uh, people in the prison and then in a, an insane asylum and in an army barracks. Um, they used their arms. They used their uh, cheeks. They also looked for men. Frankly, I mean, this is the really, to me, absolutely unbelievable part that makes it look like a B-movie. Um, they found men who had long foreskins. They took their penises. They moved the foreskin back. They abraded the head of the penis. They made the inoculum and put it on a little uh, cotton, what's called a pledgelet, or piece of cotton gauze. They held the penis for an hour and a half or two hours and hoped that they could transfer the infection this way. What were they telling the men that they were doing, these U.S. government doctors? Um, you know, it's impossible to uh, know. They didn't say in the records. I mean, all I have is, you know, Cutler's notes back and forth. So I'm sure they made some kind of explanation. Cutler spoke Spanish, which is one of the reasons they sent him. Um, not every prisoner, of course, uh, went along with this. And Cutler at one point is complaining because one guy, you know, got up and ran away with a piece of cotton still attached to his penis. Um, there were people who refused to do it. Um, many of the prisoners thought that all the blood draws that had to happen would weaken in them, and they refused to do it, even though they were being given iron pills as well um, to take care of it. I mean, remember, this is being done in the context of uh, 
this kind of experimentation, I mean, not this particular kind, going on elsewhere in the country where people who were institutionalized, whether they were prisoners or in hospitals, were considered um, the people you used to do this kind of experimentation? And it, uh, in addition to doing what you just described to these men, there were other ways they tried to infect them with syphilis when they weren't able to get enough people infected. Right. Other than the yes, they were doing the abrading. They were uh, they used at one point. They did some spinal taps as well to get um, to try to get the inoculum in, and I think the important thing.